Now, those of you who are parents would be very familiar with this, right? Um, you've got a child and they're doing something that you don't want them to do. So you go, listen, stop doing that and do this instead, right? And the answer that usually comes back is, why? And as a parent, you would just respond, don't ask why, just do it. And then we all wonder why as parents that our kids don't listen to us anymore, right? Because we haven't answered the question, why? And there are many reasons why we don't answer the question, why? Because either we don't have time to tell them why, or we just don't know why. So we just say, don't worry about why, just do it. And so this is where compliance issues come about. And in this video, we're going to look at parapets. And this is because parapets on roofs have become very commonplace because on modern roof, on modern roof designs, they wrap a parapet around the front or the sides of the building and the parapet is part of the architectural feature of the house to make it look modern, that uh, simplified look. And the reason behind that is you want to hide the roof line and not show off the roof line like the traditional houses. And parapet walls bring about their own problems. And two of the things that we're going to look at in this video is one, the capping that goes on top of the parapet because there are compliance issues with the actual design and the installation of the parapet capping. And the other thing we're going to look at is the wall membrane that comes up the parapet. How should this wall membrane be terminated? What is the reason behind the code requirements for how this wall membrane should be treated? So firstly, let's consider the membrane because that goes on first before the capping goes on the parapet. Now, the code says that the wall membrane has to come up the outside face of the inner wall. So if you have a brick veneer house, the membrane is on the outside face of the timber frame. So it comes up the outside face and then it goes on top over the top plate, then it's supposed to come back down again. And the reason is that it's supposed to drain any moisture back onto the roof and not back into the house. So that's the intent of the wall membrane. And the National Construction Code specifically details this. It says the membrane has to come up over and out so that any water will go back onto the roof and not inside back through the house. So how is this actually done? And why is this a requirement? So we know as roofers, because we see a lot of roofs, is that this item is a very common non-compliance issue because the builders don't know why the membrane has to come up over the top plate and back the other side. So very often the membrane just goes up on one side and it terminates in line with the top plate. It doesn't actually go over the top plate and come back the other side. So why the non-compliance? So it's back to the why question because the code doesn't explain why this has to be done. Now, the reason why this has to be done from an engineering and logic point of view is quite simple. And if this particular item of knowledge was transferred down to all the builders and the carpenters out there, then they would know exactly why the wall membrane has to be terminated where the code says it's going to be terminated. So let's consider the wall membrane. What does the wall mem membrane actually do? Well, it's there in the cavity and it's protecting the inner frame because the inner frame is almost part of the interior of the house. Then you've got the outer skin, which is normally brick or it's cladding. So the outer skin is outside. So in theory, water can penetrate the outer skin. And the reason for the membrane is that any water that comes through, the membrane catches the water. It's an air permeable membrane. So air can go through either way, but the water will get trapped by the membrane and it'll dribble down the membrane, down the cavity and back out. So that's the reason for the membrane. So what happens to the parapet? 
Now at the parapet, the same sort of logic can apply, right? Because the membrane has to go up the inside wall. It also has to go over the top of the top plate because water can get in from under the capping. And if the water does get in, the membrane has to be turned back down onto the roof side so that any water that goes in will be able to run onto the roof. Like if any water goes in on the external face of the brickwork, it will run down the cavity. So by the same logic, the membrane goes over the top, comes back down. Any water that collects on top of the membrane goes over the surface and then onto the roof. And it then maintains the interior of the house as dry as possible. Now, as an example, we had a problem with a roof that had a lot of condensation problems. And when Jeff went down and had a look and he took the capping off, what he noticed was that there's a lot of condensation under the capping itself. And he said, when I took the capping off, the top plate was wet. And he said, why? So I asked him, was the membrane dressed over the top plate? And he said, no, there was no membrane. So what happens is that the hot air will go out and it will hit the underside of the capping and then you get condensation. And then the condensation will go onto the, the, the timber frame or the inner skin and then it'll go back into the house. So in this case, it was typical of most houses and how the membranes have been detailed. The membrane came up the side of the wall and they terminated it. It didn't actually go over. If the membrane had gone over, then you wouldn't get the condensation on the underside of the capping that would then go back onto the inner wall and cause problems with moisture. And then Jeff said to me, I still don't fully understand this thing about permeable membranes. How does it affect the performance of the capping and the roof in terms of condensation? Well, the simple explanation is that you've got a ear permeable membrane and the membrane will keep water out. So water comes in on the exterior wall. Uh, it doesn't allow the water to come inside and the water goes down the cavity. Uh, the same on the capping, same thing. But what happens is that you generate moist air inside the house and that moist air can actually come up the parapet. So if you imagine that you've got a parapet and you've got warm moist air coming up the parapet because hot air rises and you've got a permeable membrane that goes over the top of the parapet and comes back down. What happens is that the warm moist air goes through that membrane. So the moisture plus the air goes through the membrane, right? And it allows the moisture to escape. And that's the reason to have a air permeable membrane because it allows the air and the moisture to escape. So the air and the moisture escapes through the membrane. Then it goes onto the top surface of the membrane. And so you've got warm moist air and then you've got a cold cap. So you'd say, yes, where condensation occurs, right? Sure. So if you have condensation, the condensation drips onto the air permeable membrane, but then because it's not water permeable, the water falls on the surface and it either goes back into the cavity or it goes onto the roof side and onto the apron and onto the roof. So that's how the air permeable membrane works on a parapet. So now that we've got a really good reason why the wall membrane has to be draped over the top plate and back the other side, you can go into any construction site and you can explain to the, the carpenter, uh, you can say, this is the reason why you've got to go that, like this with the membrane because it's meant to keep the moisture out. And if you simplify the explanation, then it makes compliance a lot easier because if they understand why, they would comply. The same with your child, right? If you don't tell them why, there's very little chance that they will obey you, they will comply. You've got to tell them why, and when they understand why, compliance is a lot easier. So if you can explain why the warm membrane is to be treated the way the code says, then you get better compliance. Now, let's look at the capping. Now, the capping on the top of the parapet, really, the capping has got two main purposes. Obviously, the first purpose is to keep the water 
out of the paraben. And as an adjunct to that, because the capping is part of the roof, any water that falls on the capping should go back onto the roof and be drained away. So if the capping is installed flat or it actually tilts towards the outside, all the water that falls on the capping will then dribble down the exterior wall. Now, if you have water dribbling down an exterior wall, it doesn't give you a very good look on the paintwork because after a while you get mold building up on the exterior wall because it gets wet because the water actually comes off the cap and dribbles down the wall. So what you want to do is you want to have the cap catch the water and then drain the water back onto the roof. And that's the reason why the code says, and this is not our national construction code, the national construction code implies that you have to refer to other standards. And one standard is that the capping has to have a fall towards the roof of between 3 and 5%. So the capping has to be installed at a fall, not flat. Now here in Sydney, if you go and look at most of the parapet cappings that are installed, they are all installed flat because no one's told the roofer why it can't be or it shouldn't be installed flat. So as a result, there's a non-compliance here. Uh, people just don't know. And if you were to tell a roofer, listen, your capping is wrong, it's flat, they would go, why? And you would go, you just have to comply with the code. If it's flat, it doesn't comply, it's got to be angled towards the roof. They don't really care because they don't really know why. But if you were to tell them that the reason it's sloped towards the roof is that after a few years, when you come and look at the house, you don't get that streaking down the wall anymore because all the water is sent back towards the roof, then they understand why and then there's a better chance that there's compliance. So that hopefully here in Sydney and in Australia, most of the cappings will be installed with a slope back towards the roof, other three or five degree, between a three and five degree slope back towards the roof. Now a secondary reason for the capping is that it's got to look good and also be waterproof. So when you look at most parapet caps on a roof, from the front, the elevation, you will see the cap is only between about 50 to 80 millimeters high because you don't want the cap to be too deep because it kind of looks ugly. So you've got a thin band on the front elevation. And because it is so skinny, it's really hard to put a fixing in at the front because there's, there's nothing really behind it to actually fix to. Not only that, it doesn't look really good with screws up the front. So you have a, so you have a purple cap, the front elevation, it's nice and clean, there are no fasteners. But you've got to be able to fasten the cap down onto the purple structure because otherwise the wind's gonna blow, it's gonna fall off, right? So the other option is to put a screw on the top and you'll see that roofers do that quite often. But it's not a recommended way of fastening a parapet capping because what you do is when you put a screw in, you'll dimple the parapet. So there's a lot of water gather around the screw. So over time, if the rubber perishes, water will get in where the screw is and you've got a capping that leaks. So you really shouldn't put any screws at all on the top surface of the capping. So now the only place you can put a screw is on the back face, on the roof face. So this is where a fastener for the capping is most effective because it's on a vertical surface, you don't get any ponding and it's out of sight, uh, so you don't actually see it from the front elevation or even from the top. So the screw at the back is going to be your main screw. So the question is, how are you going to hold this capping down because there's only one screw at the back? So the solution to this problem is hidden fasteners. And you'll find that one option is to put a lot of liquid nails right on the top of the capping and then you put the metal capping on top and then the liquid nails would hold the capping in place. And it kind of works fine if the capping is flat, right? Because you've got a lot of surface to put liquid nails in, you put a flat capping on, it sticks and everything is held down. But as soon as you've got a cap that is sloped, 
you haven't got a lot of surface to put liquid nails on. So it's not going to be a very good option for a capping that complies. So what's the solution? Well, really, the solution is what they call a hidden cleat. So before you put the capping on, you must put in a cleat that is screwed onto the structure of the appropriate cap. And the cleat is screwed in, and then the capping goes over the top of the cleat. It's then hooked in by the cleat. Uh, the cleat has got its own fixings, but as soon as you put the capping on, you can't see any fastness. And the way that the capping is then held down on the capping is that the cleat holds the external side of the capping and the screw on the inside holds the inside. So you've got a fastener on the inside and then you've got a hook on the outside and these two points then anchor the capping down. So now in this video about parapets, we've covered a lot of whys and we've answered the whys. So I believe that if you have an answer to the why, the chances of compliance is a lot higher because the way to induce people to comply is not to tell them just do it because it's got to be done. You've got to give them a why and if they understand the why then the compliance is going to be a lot easier.